Okay, so you are going to be suffering from anaphylaxis. You are 25 years old, you're at the uh, Chinese buffet, mm -hmm. just finished your Kung Pao prawn, and you had a sudden onset of shortness of breath, dizziness, itchy hives, and the sensation that your throat is swelling. Um, upon uh, arrival of EMS, you are breathing about 30 times a minute, labor. You, what do you think your love sound's gonna be? Wheezy, bronchospastic and wheezy. Um, your blood pressure is like 70 over 40. Why is that? Uh, dilated. dilated blood vessels secondary to anaphylaxis. Um, your heart rate is like 130. Um, you have no history of significant allergy. Uh, you take no medicines. Um, you have no medical history and you have no allergies to medicine. So what should we do for this person? I would give them Give it another one, and then. Well, you're thinking too far. Ahead. Oh, oxygen first. Oxygen. What else? Um, and then uh, from the door. From the door, ALS. Yeah. ALS. Yeah. Yes. Right. Because they're labored. They get ALS and they get oxygen. And then if you come there and evaluate them, you're going to listen to lung sounds right away. That's mm -hmm. going to help you a lot. Right. And then you're going to do the evaluation, realize this is an allergic reaction, and then give promptly epi. Yep. How much epi? Uh, 0.3. 0 0.3 milligrams. Yeah, yeah. And then can it be repeated? Uh, after five to 15 minutes. After five to 15 minutes. And you will require repeating doses. Where are the hives? You're not going to uh, go into cardiac arrest. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. 25 year old. Uh, It is. Dispatch aid one, long C, forming my first impression. We have a 20-year-old female who's breathing. She's tracking me with her eyes. Um, she's in the tripod position. Correct. I'm going to do automatic dispatch aid one. Please send additional resources. How are you today? Hi. I, I, one from this bed. What additional resources are you going to be requiring? A um, unit or? A uh, BLS unit and the medics. Okay. Um, my name's Kelsey. I'm going to take care of you today. Okay. okay. This is my team. Okay. Um, can you tell me how have you been feeling this pain? Um, I was just eating lunch and this like shrimp dish, and all of a sudden I felt like I can't breathe. Do you have any um, allergies? Um, I don't know. Maybe I do. Yeah. How's my patient's skin? Uh, kind of squatchy. Squatchy? And uh, if you look at her shoulders, you can see some huge carry on hives. Okay. I think our patient is going into anaphylaxis, so mm -hmm. let's have you get oxygen and then get the second injector. Um, so you were eating shrimp? No. About how long ago? Oh, okay. 10 minutes. Is your pain going anywhere? Um, it's just, uh, you're just really short of breath. Okay. Um, you don't have any known allergies? Not that I just got it. Okay. Oh, you got it. Okay. So my partner, um, he's grabbing your blood pressure. And we're going to look at this epinephrine and we're going to call medical control those uh, MCL. <laughs> we have a page 25 year old female and Respiratory distress with hives, no known allergies, but she ate shrimp and now she's struggling to breathe. So suspected. Suspected um, trigger. Is it expired? Uh, is it expired? Uh, no. So it's not expired, it's clear, it's adrenaline, it's one to one thousand, one milligram per milliliter. And our patient is over 66 pounds. Yeah, or just as is. Uh, no, blood pressure 70 over 50. Respiratory rate of 30. Heart rate 130. Signing 85%. Okay. Do you want me to draw this all up or just verbalize all of it? Uh, if it's easy for you to do, do it. Yeah. 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 Ye
Okay. So, my so partner, she's... Skyler's going to put this in your thigh, okay? And I'm going to continue to ask you some. Can I breathe off of that? It will help you. Okay. So, we're going to sharp out. 70 over 50. Do uh, you mind if I listen to your lung sound? Okay. We're going to have those little sharps. I'm going to make sure that's okay. 92? 85. Also, the sensation that his throat was kind of swelling. Yep. Yeah. I got strider. What do I hear? And no strider. If you're listening to lung sounds, you have diffuse wheezes bilaterally. Respiratory means it's constricting. Uh, let's see what you do. So we got, she's over 66, so it's 0 0.3 mm -hmm. of epinephrine. Cool. Are we affirm? Yep, I confirm that. Okay. We're going to clean your leg. Okay. And we're going to actually grab you, okay? <laughs> do you want me to actually draw it out? Cool. Go draw it out. So we're going to take it out, and then we're going to poke it in your thigh laterally. I'm going to inject it. I'm going to back it out first, and then I'm going to inject after I confirm there was no blood. And I'm going to massage it for... We're going to reuse it. Well, not today. I'm going to massage it for 10 <laughs> seconds. Just the real one. And I'm going to manage it. <laughs> and how are you feeling? Are you feeling that you're able to Breathing is getting better? a little better. Okay. So I'm going to continue to ask you some questions and we're we going to reassess. Containers? No, we don't. Oh, shoot. We're going to reassess. Do you want, what do you want me to go get one? Yeah, if you want. Uh, they have an extra one in 108. There's three on the table. How would you rate your pain? One being nothing, ten being. What is our uh, respiratory window? Respiratory is about 30. Oh, it's the same. And yeah. your pain is okay. irradiating. I don't think she has pain. Just checking back in. It's sensation you know. of uh, closing of her throat and uh, shortness of breath. Yeah. So I should listen to it. Right. And how much has gone down a little? Yeah, you like blood pressure? Yeah. Uh, you just got another blood pressure of 70 over 50. Again. Okay. Again. No spiders sounds. Moving good air. There's what sound? No striders sound. Okay, that's really cool. I actually heard them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, on the throat, way clear. Yeah. Is our patient um, improved after administrating? Um, the shortness of breath is improving. <laughs> How are you feeling? A little bit better. A little dizzy still. Shortness of breath dizzy. is markedly improved. Okay. So we're just going to continue to monitor our patient. Um, you check vitals? Okay. Um, so I'm a little bit of on the open side still 98. Okay. 98? 98 on the SPSU, yeah. Okay. Did I grab a full one? Probably. Did you? Shake it. Sounds full. <laughs> <laughs> Um, am I supposed to keep going or is that You're supposed it? to wait because you can do um, every twice. Yeah, within 5 to 15 minutes we could give up the hand. She's still having signs. We're here to comfort you. <laughs> <laughs> five minutes later. Okay. How's uh, your breathing feeling? Markedly improved. 128 over 70. Okay. So the pressure 70 over 50. Still. 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 Uh, respiratory still 30. Uh, respiratory is like 12. Since we did give you epinephrine, um, are you okay to stand up and get on our stretcher and say we're going to take you off to the hospital? Because I think we think you had an allergic reaction to something that you ate. Is that okay? Um, always challenging to make a patient with a blood pressure 70 over 50 stand up and walk to your stretcher. Do not recommend that. Okay. If you're working on TriMed and then they find out you walk to your patient with a blood pressure of 70 over 50 and they collapse and fall to the ground, Short they get to lose your job. So, so we're still waiting for ALS though. So You're still waiting for ALS. Is there anything you can do for this patient? 
If her breathing had not improved, we would have definitely uh, given her another dose of epinephrine. Uh, breathing has improved. Breathing is great. We could also lay him down just trying to improve his blood pressure. Laying down uh, improves blood pressure. That's a good call. What else could you possibly do for this hypotensive anaphylactic patient? Treat him for shock. Spend five minutes. Spend between five and 15 minutes. We assess vitals. We do vitals twice. Yeah. Same thing. Five or 15 minutes later, they're not short of breath. Their lungs are clear bilaterally. They're hypotensive. What do you do? I'm not sure. Maybe she's just super fit. Well, so we'll, can't, we'll stop the scenario. The answer is you redose your epi. Even if the breathing has improved and, like, say, the skin is starting to clear up from the high blood. You administer epi if you have a suspected trigger plus one of three things hypotensive, hypotension, or hives, diffuse or. or uh, um, uh, expansive hives or uh, apneic and oral swelling. Shortness of breath. Okay. Hypotension, shortness of breath. Oh no, dyspnea. Sorry. Yeah. But we'll, we'll have... use hives. One of the three. All you need is one. Of All you need is one. Okay. So she still so has. So now hypotension. you have. Yeah. After five minutes, you reevaluate. What do you have? A known trigger. Do you have shortness of breath? A suspected trigger, right? A suspected trigger. Are you yeah. short of breath? No. no. Do you have diffuse and progressive hives? They're going away. Maybe somewhere. they're going away. Do you have hypotension? Yes. Yes. So now you are still in anaphylaxis. You treat for anaphylaxis. If this exact same patient happened and their blood pressure was 70 over 50 and they have hive and a suspected trigger, what do you do? Give them epi initially, right? So you're not looking at that short of breath thing is your indicator to give epi. It's one of the several that you're looking at. And don't be alarmed if the patient isn't totally fixed after your first dose of epi. Frequently requires multiple doses of epi to actually resolve symptoms of anaphylaxis. To the point where, you know, you can come on scene and be like, okay, wheezes, boom. Uh, five minutes later, still hypotension, boom. Five minutes later, resolved. And you did it with your epi. So don't be shy about doing it. Both these patients needed redosing of epi. Mm -hmm. What does epi do for anaphylaxis? Um, Why do we do sympathetic it? Speeds up the, uh, it's a sympathomimetic, which stimulates the sy sympathetic nervous system. But what does it do for you? Hypertension. Opens up the blood vessels. Up the uh, blood vessels. Sorry. Vasoconstrictor. Yeah. Vaso yeah. Vasoconstrictor. Vaso Bronco Vasoconstrictor. So when anaphylaxis is opening and dilating all your veins and your vasculature, epi constricts. So this is what makes you hypotensive, right? Because all of your vasculature is getting bigger. And so your blood, the same amount of blood in bigger pipes, the pressure goes down. And epi clamps that down. That's one of the reasons we use epi for anaphylaxis. That's why it works for hypotension. Why else do we do it? We don't really care about speeding up the heart rate. In this case, the heart rate's already clipping. Opens airways. How does it do that? It opens up the bronchioli. It's a bronchodilator. Yeah. And what is anaphylaxis doing to your bronchioles? Constricting. Constricting them. So it's a bronchodilator. And it's a vasoconstrictor. It squeezes down here and it opens up the lungs. And both of those things are happening for anaphylaxis. That's why you're wheezy and short of breath, because your bronchos, your bronchospastic, your your uh, bronchioles are constricting, <laughs> and you're hypotensive because your peripheral vasculature is dilated. So it hits both of those things. And don't be a, don't be surprised one bit if five minutes later, your job isn't done yet. You gotta repeat it. Do it again. When do you not give epi? What's a contraindication for epi? What if they've taken Viagra in the last 72 hours? What if they have black tri stool? No, there is no contraindication for epi. And no. It's like they have doses. <laughs> it's like they flip the table. No contraindication. <laughs> huh. So if you have that and you're, you're dealing with anaphylaxis, 
not allergic reaction. You can have somebody that's got like itchy hives, um, maybe a little itchy hives, and they're breathing fine and their blood pressure's fine. Benadryl probably will be fine for them. But if it's expanding hives, or they're short of breath, or they're hypertensive, heavy. Questions on that? Did everybody evaluate and notice the person who's short of breath and call for the medic unit, put them on oxygen? Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. And then as you did your lung sounds right away? Yes? Yes. So all the more reason, especially on this patient, to get right in on that lung sound thing, because that will point you in the right direction, right? You're getting up close to the patient and you're noticing if it's a rail or a wheeze or clear, and those are important bits of information. All right, let's do another one. I guess I'm going to go all the way around. Oh, we got time. Yeah, we'll have to go. 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 Yeah